What's up, students? This is our uh, video talking about stoichiometry, and this is part one. Here's a chance to write down the essential question. You might want to pause the video to do so. In fact, throughout this entire lecture, you're welcome to pause the video, and I encourage you to, if you need to, rewind. You can fast forward through things. Uh, you can scrub through the video to find the things you really need to get to. But here is what we're going to be talking about. How do we use mole ratios as conversion factors? To begin our topic, we want to talk about stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is a very exciting thing in chemistry, but also probably one of the toughest things because we take a lot of things and we combine it together, including um, molar conversions. We're going to talk about mole ratios. You need to be able to write reactants and products in a chemical re equation. Um, but stoichiometry is just a method to calculate the relative quantities between reactants and products in a chemical reaction. So here's an example. Here's a chemical reaction. It's just a general one. It's not anything specifically chemical-wise, but uh, here's two graham cracker squares designated by this 2GC2. And if you're wondering what the GC2 stands for, uh, if you look at an actual square of graham cracker, it's made of two smaller pieces. So technically there's four pieces of graham cracker here, but we break them off into kind of two chunks. So that's two chunks of graham cracker squares. One marshmallow is pretty self-explanatory. And again, one chocolate square set, here's one chocolate set, and it's made of three pieces. So that's CP3. And then finally we get a s'more where we just combine everything together. So stoichiometry is here to help us calculate the relative quantity between the reactants and the products. So let's give an example of that. To do that, we need to know what a mole ratio is. So if this is our reaction that we saw before, a mole ratio is just the ratio between reactants and products. So their coefficients, which show the relative quantity relationship, quantitative relationship, or the ratio between reactants and between the reactants and the products. So if you look at this reaction at the top and you understand what a coefficient is, you can see that this is a two graham cracker to one chocolate square set to one marshmallow to one s'mores ratio. And this ratio will be extremely helpful for us in order to determine the quantities of things. So let's check this out. What can stoichiometry do for us? Well, stoichiometry really can tell us the haves, the needs, and the gets. And I'll give you a few examples of that right now. So knowing this ratio right here, Let's start off with this question. It says, if I have four moles of this reactant, so let's say I have four moles of graham cracker squares. And it says, how many moles of this reactant, so how many moles of chocolate squares do I need, assuming we've got plenty of marshmallows, in order to make this reaction happen, in order to get some s'mores? Well, this is a two to one ratio. So if you think about it, if this is a two to one ratio, and I have four graham cracker squares, then I need two chocolate piece sets. Thus, I'm using that two to one ratio. So if it's two to one, but what I really have is four, then I have two. So two to one, four to two, both of, both of the same ratio. We can keep going. What if I have four moles of graham cracker squares? Assuming I've got plenty of both marshmallows and chocolate pieces, the question might be how many, how many s'mores am I gonna get from that? So I have only four graham crackers, but I have plenty of chocolate and plenty of marshmallows. Well, if you think about it, if I've got four graham crackers and it's a two to one ratio, then I'm only going to get, again, I'm only going to get two s'mores. So that's using my ratio. Last question. What if I got six s'mores? So like, let's say I end up and I have six s'mores or six moles of s'mores. And the question is, is how many moles do I need? How many graham crackers do I need in order to do that? Well, if I have six moles of s'mores and it's a two to one ratio, well, therefore I need 12 moles or 12 graham cracker squares in order to do that. So that's what stoichiometry can do. It tells us the haves, the needs, and the gets. So mole ratios are all about letting us relate things. We can relate reactants to reactants. These are the haves and the needs. I have one reactant. How much of the other reactant do I need in order to to finish this uh, reaction. They let us relate reactants to products. What if I have this much reaction reactant? How much of a product am I gonna get? Or what if I had this much product? How much of the reactant did I need in order to make that? Finally, the get get. What if I had one, two products, right? Double replacement reactions where I have two products. Let's say I have figured out how much I get of one product. I can use that to tell how much I should get of another product as well. So that's what mole ratios let us do. So here's an example. Here's a reaction. I have two potassium hydroxide 
uh, two moles of potassium hydroxide, one mole of sulfuric acid. And what I'm going to get from that is one mole of potassium sulfate and two mo molecules or two moles of water. Knowing that, I can do different I can kind of do these different thought process things. So let's try a have need, right? If you had two moles, so that's two moles of potassium hydroxide, how many moles of acid would you need? Well, two moles of potassium hydroxide. Well, I need one mole, right? So two to one. What if I had two moles of potassium hydroxide? How many moles of water am I going to get? Well, again, it's the same thing two moles of potassium hydroxide should react to form two moles of water if I have plenty of everything else. Well, what if I had 20 moles? What if I had 20 moles of potassium sulfate? How many moles of water would I also get? Well, this is a little bit different because it's not as easy as just looking at these numbers. Now I've got to use my ratio. It's a one to two ratio. So if I had 20 moles of potassium sulfate, I'm going to get 40 moles of water. And so that's kind of cool. That's what that's what stoichiometry is all about. Now, a big warning to you, stoichiometry is going to be impossible if you do not know how to write a formula correctly and balance it. You need to know how to cancel charges individually for each of the different reactants and products. And then you need to know how to go back and write these uh, ratios, these, sorry, these coefficients. If you don't know how to do that, it becomes impossible because you'll never be able to use mole ratios correctly. So mole ratios are really just conversion factors. If you think about it, I can think if I know potassium hydroxide, then I know how much both I need of sulfuric acid. I know how much I'm going to get of potassium sulfate. And I know how much I'm going to get of water. Same thing if I just know uh, hydro uh, sulfuric acid, then I know I'm going to get or receive these different things. So how do we use these conversion factors? Well, you should know how to use a conversion factor. We always do some type of a multiplication thing. So here's kind of an example problem using that reaction from before. This time, what if I had 1.3 moles of potassium hydroxide? So I'm not giving you a whole number. This becomes a little bit challenging when we use decimals, but it's a little bit more realistic. If I had 1.3 moles of potassium hydroxide, how many moles of potassium sulfate are we going to get? So this is a, this is a have get problem. So when we do this problem, we always start with what we what we're given in the formula. So we're given 1.3 moles of potassium hydroxide. Now to use a conversion factor, I always say multiply. Now if you think about it, a conversion factor just goes from one unit to the next. So our unit here is moles of potassium hydroxide, and we need to get rid of that. So we're going to go from moles of potassium hydroxide, and we want to go two moles of potassium sulfate. That's our conversion factor. Now, what are the numbers here? Again, we just go up here and look in our formula. Potassium hydroxide, it's a two to one ratio. So two moles of potassium hydroxide to one moles of potassium sulfate. If I do this conversion factor, this is the conversion factor, then I'm going to get my answer because moles moles of potassium hydroxide are going to cancel out and I'm going to end up with moles of potassium sulfate, which I think is just really cool. All right. Second warning to you guys. Warning number two. It is essential that you write both the SI units and the molecules for everything. Stoichiometry is going to get extremely confusing if you don't be consistent. A lot of you guys really just try to write the number, but not only do you need to write the number, you need to write the unit, such as moles or grams, and you need to write the molecule, such as potassium hydroxide or potassium sulfate, so on and so forth. Don't cut corners, otherwise things get really confusing for you. And even for the teacher, if you if you need help and you want to talk to me and you, you want me to help you, it's it becomes extremely hard for me to even help you if you don't have both the unit and the molecule along with the number because I won't be able to tell you what you did wrong. Science is really a lot about the units and the molecules, and it's following along with those. If you follow, if, the, if you got the process down, the number goes along with it. So let's try this reaction. It says, consider the following reaction. Here's what I recommend you do. I really recommend that you read this problem, pause the video, and try to do it yourself. I really highly recommend that. So do it. Pause the video right now. Did you pause? Good. I hope you did. I hope you tried it. Now let's check your work. So here we have a reaction. We have 
four NH3s, we have plus, plus five O2s, gives us four NOs, plus six H2Os. So what we're going to do is let's solve this problem. To do it, we need to start with what we have, 1.5 moles of NH3. Now we want to go from NH3 to O2, so let's look at our conversion factor. It's a four to five ratio, so four moles of NH3 to five moles of O2, that's going to give us our problem. And so that's what we really need, and that's our final answer. All right, that's all I have for you. Go ahead and do the practice. Thanks a lot.